and welcome to another Tech Campus Coffee Live webinar. This is an opportunity for you to learn about career paths and tech directly from professionals in your field. We'll be speaking to technical representatives from a variety of fields at Tech, and they'll share why they enjoy what they do. Participants also have a chance to directly ask speakers and recruiters questions and get a good understanding of why Tech is a great place to work, as well as where your strengths, talents, and learning opportunities lie. So today, we want, without further ado, we want to introduce our two speakers here and uh, to give you some insights into what it's like to work with tech. So first, we have Cody Klingbeil, um, and he's a mechanical engineer in training at our trail operations. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, so like Stacy was saying, I'm uh, working in, in maintenance as a mechanical engineer with trail ops. Um, our site is... Uh, it's kind of incredible in that it's been around for for ages. We uh, there's a, currently a local a, a radio campaign uh, going on in the trail area to celebrate 125 years of smelting operations at the the trail smelter, and so um, we have equipment that needs maintaining that I think has been installed <laughs> since the the operation kicked off. Um, lots of really oddball stuff. Um, old, 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 like squirrel cage electric motors and compressors that are, you know, made out of uh, ductile iron and shipped over from, from Germany pre-World War. Um, lots of stuff you just don't see anywhere else. Strange process uh, materials and, and exotic alloys. Um, I, and I'd, I'd love to tell you guys more about them if you have any any questions for me. Thanks, Cody. Yeah, and that's a great reminder. Actually, if anyone is um, interested in any specific questions or burning um, things that you want to know about, for by all means, put it in the chat or like Masaki mentioned at the beginning, for those of you who might join later, please put your hand up. If you want to turn your mic on and ask a question, we're more than happy to do that as well. Um, and so then without further ado, then we'll introduce Caitlin Carson. So Caitlin's a mechanical engineer in training at our Fording River operation. So Caitlin, maybe you want to do a, a quick intro of yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, so most people call me Katie. Um, I worked, I've been at Tech for almost three years now. Um, and I worked mostly in the mobile maintenance at Fording River Operations. Um, so that was mostly doing reliability and maintenance um, for the haul trucks. Um, we have a very large fleet, uh, I think over 70 trucks here at Fording. Um, and then recently I've moved into Operating Excellence, which is another name for continuous improvement. Um, a lot of Lean Six Sigma and management wiring and you kind of get to work with all departments, so mine ops, uh, mobile maintenance, and plant. So, yeah, that's my little intro. <laughs> that's great. Perfect. All right. So I think a good place for us to start is maybe um, I'll throw it over to you first, Cody. But how about you talk to us a little bit about, you know, you you talked about kind of the equipment you get to work on. It's pretty unique. Um, I know at Trail. So maybe talk to us a little bit about. What gets you excited about your time at Tech, or what are sort of the most rewarding parts of your job? Cody froze on us. Yeah, he does look <laughs> frozen. <laughs> He's very stoic. Okay, how about I'll pass over to you, Caitlin? Oh, first. there you go. There you are. <laughs> and you're just muted, Cody. Sorry. <laughs> look at that freestyle. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah, I'm mute, Cody. Oh, he's on mute again. Sorry about that. My oh. I got the the blue screen of death on my computer, so <laughs> I'll I'll just get that rebooted and then switch back over as soon as I can get logged on. Sure, Stacey, you want to pass the question on to yeah. Caitlin? Yeah, we'll come back to with... Cody. First up to Katie. Yeah, so Katie, um, maybe if you could speak to, I guess, at your time at Fording River and now maybe in Operating Excellence, whatever you want to highlight, but what about your job thus far has been sort of more the rewarding parts or the, the parts that you really seem to enjoy the most? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm on site, which has been super rewarding because you're right in the action, like you are climbing on the trucks, you're seeing what's failing, you're looking at bolts that snapped in half or bearings that have worn out. Um, 
so it's super fast paced um which has been super rewarding and then uh, when you kind of make a design change or recommendation and then you get to see it implemented actually on the truck and and uh, see like the reliability improve on it, it um, is really rewarding um, as an engineer to, to really have that hands on. Yeah, um, yeah that's my Perfect. favorite part. <laughs> Perfect. And Cody, if you're ready to answer, uh, maybe I'll throw it over to you. What would you what stands out to you as some of the more um, rewarding parts of your job thus far? looks like we're in business Lisa might have you back on the oh no <laughs> this is the name of the game these days we have technical uh, difficulties <laughs> all the okay. time you mean, are, are we good we could, yeah we're good now <laughs> sorry about that yeah um I, I'll echo what Caitlin said there um like definitely the more hands-on stuff is the more rewarding um I I guess I got a 21st century attention span in that I I like quick wins. So for me, um, I, I like I like the little fixes where, you know, I, I get to go out into the field and, yeah, find a, a broken bracket or, or something that is, you know, an overloaded or, or strange vibration on a pump. And I can, you know, go spec a new seal or, or get out and uh, develop a weld repair plan for something and, and then work with the trades to, to implement that repair. Um, there is a in in my role as a as a maintenance engineer like a lot of um, bigger more long term planning projects that might have like a multi multi year execution cycle um, and and I do enjoy that kind of work but not quite as much as you know being able to get something fixed and then see the fix in action within you know eight twelve hours. That's great. And then someone's asked in the chat, and Sam um, asked a little bit about on the flip side of that, then what's the most challenging part of your job? So maybe Katie, we'll start with you and then we'll throw it over to Cody. Good question. Mm -hmm. um, can we ask that to Cody first? <laughs> yeah, yeah, put some thought into it for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's challenge free here. We're just smooth sailing all the time. <laughs> How about you, Cody? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'd say probably just the the sheer volume of work yeah, that yeah. I have uh, is like I I it's good because it's job security. Like I I will never ever ever have to worry about not being busy. But it's also a little daunting when you're getting pulled in in sixteen different directions and you want to be able to sink a bunch of time into one project and and like see it through when you, you know that you can't devote that much time <laughs> I, it's i guess it's a little bit like finishing an engineering degree you know you you can you can sit down and focus on 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 one class and and ace that class uh but at the end of the day you're not really doing yourself any favors it's 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 more about time management than anything else so I would say that's probably the most challenging is just knowing how to how to spread myself how thin and where most effectively you know yep. to <laughs> to get the best value for my time yeah it's not the type of job that you're sitting around going what am i going to do next i wonder like <laughs> it's always more work than we could get to but it, that's you know for a lot of us it, it makes it pretty fun for sure and how about for yeah. you katie yeah so it's kind of similar to cody's but i just say like the changing priorities um, so, like, as he said, there's a bunch of requests coming from all different areas and trying to prioritize, but also even with, like, the the price of coal changing, like, we'll be in cost reduction, and then all of a sudden we're like, okay, hey, go, go, go. Um, so, like, sometimes you can be asked to just switch priorities, like, on a dime, and, and like, you just got to kind of be flexible, and, and yeah, that's it, just the, the industry that we're in, so. That's great. It's great advice, actually. I, and a lot of times students ask me, like, what makes a successful student or a successful AIT? And I'm like, you're coming in with an attitude where you want to learn as much as you possibly can. But boy, you got to be flexible because things change <laughs> pretty quick around here. It makes it fun, but it certainly keeps us on our toes. <laughs> great. Uh, there's some questions popping up here. So 
Ms. Aki, if you can help me uh, make sure I get them all. Um, I know someone's asked here um, a little bit about technology, and I usually sort of throw this into my question, so I'm happy someone's asked it. They've they've got a there's a, a mechanical engineer with a geotechnical um, experience, and they have a strong passion for programming and computer science. I wonder if there's opportunities to combine those two skills. Um, and something we often talk about too, and, I, and we didn't really get into it at the beginning, but um, you know, if anyone's looked into research, research about tech, you see things like race 21 and race 25 and uh, race X. There's a few different terms. There's lots of sort of technology implementation. And, and basically right now, tech is going through a transformation in terms of implementing technology across the business. And so you're, you're definitely seeing a lot more really unique skill sets that we're looking for, but also really cool projects coming in that are able to us, allow us to improve our safety, productivity, um, so many different areas that it's really just helping us sort of up our game in terms of the business. So I guess along those same lines and along with Ali's question, um, can maybe, uh, Kate, Katie, can you talk a little bit about sort of some technology projects that are happening, but also in, in particular, what Ali's looking for is if there's opportunity to use her, uh, their skill sets in, in programming and, and computer science within the, the field. Yeah, for sure. So there is an entire team dedicated to this kind of like technology improvements and they have people from all different skill sets like plant maintenance, um, computer science, machine learning, like they got those um, technology improvement kind of people with the coding and the programming kind of stuff. Um, so they have a whole team dedicated to that. There's tons of opportunities in there. Um, and then on the other side, um, a lot of our roles have included that anyways, like we just using Power BI and uh, coding and, and making graphs. It's pretty, that program is pretty new to tech and we've been um, upping our game in that reporting area quite a bit. So even I've found myself to do quite a bit of, of that programming and reporting side of things. And then with the geotechnical, so there's at Fording, they have a coal quality role. And I've actually seen quite a bit of mechanical engineers go in that role. So it's uh, more on the mining engineering side, but um, it gives mechanical engineers that view on the other side of the what mine operations does. So they put a lot of mechanical engineers in that role. And it, with that experience, it sounds like that'd be pretty ideal. Yeah, that's great. How about for you, Cody? What's few your options. Experience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, just from a technology implementation standpoint, like there is, there's definitely a, a demand on site and that crossover between computer science and programming. Um, we like, I assume she volunteered for it, but we recently had a, a co-op student out who was uh, doing a, a really interesting program involving machine learning and uh, machine vision to characterize the surface quality of lead anodes on our lead casting line. So, so basically, um, what we do for our, our lead casting is we have uh, lead bullion, which is is um, poured into a mold, and then that mold is it it's it's a big sheet which is then suspended in a tank full of um, a, a, an acid, I believe, and an electrical current is passed through it. Um, and then that that lead is is electro refined, so it plates out from solution onto um, the cathode. I may be getting anode and cathode mixed up here, but into onto the cathode. Um, and and the process of doing that refines it, and and we get like uh, two two or three nines lead out of out of the process. So the 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 anodes themselves, the castings, um, it's it's really important that the surface finish on them is is good and that they don't have any cracks because if they have cracks, then they can fall down into the tank of acid and then it's a whole rigmarole to get them out. Um, so what this, this co-op student had done was to implement a machine vision solution where on the casting line, she had a camera and then trained a, a vision model to recognize certain defects in the surface and then uh, automate the rejection process for the anodes. 
which was really cool. Like that was that was her co-op term. I think it was an eight month or or it may, might have even been a year. And the deliverable was like a fully functioning machine vision projection system for for lead anodes. Um, so there's definitely that that thirst for the uh, the technology and, and implementation, especially here. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Perfect. All right. Um, and someone's asked here, can you describe the company culture and how it contributes to the success of the company? Um, and I think we could probably all talk, all talk about this quite a bit, but um, maybe Katie, I'll throw it over to you to give you a turn. Maybe you could think about some things that really have kept you around at tech and sort of the, maybe speak to the culture a little bit in, in terms of um, what's, what's led to our success. Oh, you just unmute. There you go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, there we go. I'm repeating. So, uh, for the culture, I really like that everybody is like pretty. There's a lot of people that are outdoorsy and like outgoing and stuff, and we like will like people hang out after work to to go skiing or and stuff. So it's that's a favorite part about the culture here for me and then it's it's uh they are definitely improving in the diversity it is hard to get some people in especially roles like the trades uh, for mechanics and electricians and stuff but they are definitely um upping their game in the inclusion and diversity areas and yeah I found it to be a really welcoming welcoming environment working it's great Perfect. And Cody, can you speak to that in terms of uh, at, your, at the trail operations? Yeah, I uh, definitely want to echo that emphasis on on recreation and uh, and free time and, and personal time, like work life balance. Um, like I live in Rosland, which is a seven minute drive from the tech trail ops site. Um, and like I I've run commute into work a few mornings when it's when it, it's early enough or when it's light enough early enough that I can can do it without fear of breaking my neck. Um, <laughs> I'm also like I, I'm a I'm a seven minute drive away from the ski hill. Um, there's yeah mountain biking single track everywhere. Uh, the you know, the the maintenance planner over at the electrolytic and planning er, and, and melting plant recently purchased the bowling alley in Castlegar so we me and a couple other guys have like a kind of an ongoing Tuesday night bowling league there. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. I could regale you with stories, but suffice it to say, like there's, there is a focus on the, on the work-life balance and, um, and they, 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 for me too, I, I'm sort of a, I've got a three-year-old, like he was born the same, uh, the same year that I graduated and, and got hired on at tech. It all kind of happened at once. <laughs> and, uh, and so they're, there's just no questions asked if you need to take a, a day to, you know, look after your kid or uh, even just you need a snow day because, geez, you know, we got 50 centimeters <laughs> last night and you want to get out and hit the slopes. So, um, yeah, very accommodating. And but, you know, we we do work hard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the schedules definitely allow us to to have some um, neat time off in terms of like we have an earned day off schedule. So for Cole, a lot of us work every other Friday. Um, you get a Friday off, so every second week. Um, I know our Highland Valley Copper Operations does uh, four day weeks, so they work Monday to Thursday. There's a schedule, or you work Tuesday to Fridays. I think Trail, you might work an earned day off schedule as well, similar to Cole potentially. Um, so yeah, it just allows you to have that little extra time to 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 really enjoy the lifestyles that we're able to offer here. We're we're pretty lucky. We're based in some pretty spectacular locations, so um, we definitely have that. Um, that's a pretty easy sell, I guess, for a lot of us for sure. Um, the nice thing too, I think, about the culture here is that um, like it does. There's a lot for promotion within, and and really encouraging people to move up in positions within the company too. So uh, yeah, we do recruit a lot, but we also seek. Um, sort of internal um, promotions as well and really look for, to build our internal people up to make sure that they get experience within the company. I um, mean, you know, I think Katie, probably you could speak to that and that you've you've moved from one area of, of mechanical engineering into operational excellence. So there's opportunity to move and really get a good variety of experience within the company, which um, is always nice. You can 
you know, I've been here for 14 years and you're able to, to work and, and provide value and have challenging opportunities all the time, even through a long career, which is really cool. Um, I'm mindful of time and I, I know we want to get through a few more questions and maybe another another question, Masaki, and then we'll jump to the trivia. Does that sound good? And then we can always circle back at the end and um, and touch back on some questions if we haven't got a chance to deal with them. But um, maybe what we'll do is do a, a hand up. So is it, sorry, Mikhaius, is that how you say your name? Um, it's pronounced Mikias, but um, I go by Mickey. I go by Mickey. So like Mickey Mouse, but yeah, um, no, um, my, my main question, my, I had two questions and then the first part was, um, what sort of things did you like, I was, it was before, um, Antonio came in and it was for Cody and Katie and I was like, what sort of things did, would you learn in like a co-op position and if they had one and how would that apply to like a more full-time engineering position? But I think Antonio answered that very well. And the second part was, um, for, I guess it's good for Antonio. Um, what sort of things did you like pick up in your degree? um that you're still doing i think um that you applied in a co-op position and um that were very useful to you in your co-op time at um tech i think one of the things that doesn't get highlighted enough that i thought is really important is in my position i was dealing with several different people in the trade side so as an engineer at the very beginning it was hard for me to be able to communicate where an engineer wants but then by the end of the term, like I was able to to figure out more, OK, yeah, this is what a trade person might find more important to know and what all that they want to know. And if you communicate in that regard, then they listen to you and they help you out. So, yeah, that learning experience of just yes, being able to go from an engineering mindset to something that you can communicate to other people and they, they can uh, actually follow what you want them to do, that that was very neat and very useful. Okay, that, make, that, that, that answered my question well. Thank you. Um, one comment I wanted to make was um, I really liked how even though tech asks for a lot of flexibility on your part, they also offer a lot of flexibility. Um, so that was just one comment I wanted to make. But yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, Mickey. Thanks, Antonio, for that as well. Um, okay, well, what we'll do, how about we put the last slide up? I want to make sure we get our plug in for um, opportunities with tech in terms of if anyone's interested in applying. And then, like I said, then we'll go back and, and handle some of those questions. So um, just to, to give you some understanding, I guess, of the co-op experience here, and I think you guys can sort of get an indication from the conversation today, but this is some quotes from some students that also worked at tech and uh, talked a little bit about their experience. We do an evaluation with every student and also their supervisors that we keep that on file and that sort of enhances their applications for, for future if they want to come back as an EIT, that sort of thing. But it really gives you a good understanding of the type of experience they're, they're able to get while they're here. Um, so yeah, so like I mentioned, the co-op program is huge. We have also a, a huge EIT program as well. We hire lots of EITs. Um, all our postings are going to be on our tech website. So it's tech.com slash careers. For co-op, we're currently recruiting for the January 2022 term. Um, and we're going to have over, gosh, I think over 60, 65 positions at least across the business um, in terms of opportunities. And I mean, mechanical tends to be, I think last year I, I mentioned we hired 230 students and at least 35 of those were, were mechanical alone. So um, it's a, a huge chunk. Like I hire more mechanical engineers than we do mining engineers, say, and coal, which is always surprising for people. And so we can use them in so many different areas. And you can hear that from the conversation today, whether you're working in processing plants, whether you're working in even in a coal quality or in, um, or in the maintenance and mobile maintenance crew or operational excellence, like the, really the opportunities are endless. And we have people that work in data analytics as well that sort of come from a maintenance background sometimes. So there's quite a variety of experience. And certainly, um, you know, the probably the most common feedback we get from students is, I can't believe how much responsibility I was given as a co-op with tech. Um, and like you say, I think from the conversation today, you can tell pretty quick that uh, that's the type of experience you're going to get here, which, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to support you through it. But boy, the learning is going to be huge. So that's a little bit about the recruitment side of things. Um, Let's circle back. I'm sorry, Masaki, if you can lead yeah. me through, making sure I, I didn't forget any questions there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scan through the chats. And so, yeah, I think we can do it. I think we can answer all these questions. Yeah. But uh, let's maybe, we got to have some students with their hands up. So I think yeah. Ahmed, um, or maybe Momo actually, um, it says hand up. Um, yeah, feel free to unmute your mic and ask your question. Hi, hello. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, awesome. So um, my main question would be, in terms of hiring, do you guys look 
more into grades or um, experience outside actual school work, like uh, volunteering and engineering club activities and stuff. Yeah, we kind of look at the at the whole picture, truthfully. So um, we certainly look at if you had previous experience, obviously that's an ideal, especially in like mining or sort of an industrial type environment. Um, but that's not a deal breaker for us. Like we certainly look at overall, um, you know, any experience you have is good experience. So I always tell people, put that experience on your resume, whether it was working in fast food or, you know, working in clubs or volunteering on campus. Like that really shows someone's really well-rounded and keen to get involved. And, you know, when, when we talk about how, um, you know, when Cody talked a little bit about the challenges of like balancing all these projects, if you're able to balance a few things while you're in school, whether it's volunteering for this or a uh, part of like this engineering society or whatever it is, those are great skill sets that you're learning that team building and that experience. Um, and then through the interview process, we gauge fit in terms of, um, you know, you're willing to, to learn, you're excited about the opportunity, you have a best injury, a passion for the field. Those are things that kind of come through the interview process and that helps us make a decision too. So there's no real deal breakers. It's a co-op experience. We understand people are coming in with not a ton of experience usually. And, um, and that's why we have them set up and, and we're prepared to, to support you through your growth at, at tech. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, is yeah. it okay if I follow up with a really quick sure. question? Like, yeah. So um, what would you have to have in like a, uh, your resume to actually get like an opportunity for like an interview type? Just yeah, I mean, like, the, yeah, like your foot in the door type thing. Yeah, um, no, it's a great question. Um, there's no secret formula. I guess I wish I could tell you is exactly this, but um, there's certainly highlighting so the experiences you have. Make it real. I guess I always tell people, warn people that it's likely a recruiter or an HR person that's looking at your resume first. So any experience you do have um, that, yeah, it's technical, for sure explain it, but then make it so it's understandable for non-technical people as well, because certainly that's an asset to make it really straightforward and clear that if someone else were screening the resumes, they're going to totally say, oh, yeah, okay, I understand how this skill set is going to be valuable for, you know, this requirement that we have. Um, so that's one thing. And then highlighting their interest, like that you attended sessions that you're really interested in tech and you attended a session like, you know, the campus coffee or whatever it is. Um, those are nice because it just shows that you've had that engagement and a little bit of history with us in terms of um, your interest in the company. And, and that helps a lot, too. So in your cover letter mentioning that you attended a session and, and maybe things that Cody said or Katie said that really stood out to you were really part of the reason why you applied. It's, it's nice to say to say. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I had to. It's it's not it's not going to be so much about what you know, and you know you there's it's it's impossible for you to walk into a position at tech and and know what to do right off the bat. Like there's just and I I I'm learning new things every day, and this is this is not just something that I'm saying. Like I there's not a day that's gone by so far where I haven't had to figure something out or find out something new. So it just what what you want to emphasize is is how you are able to adapt and learn and apply what you know to your 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 position. So just I, I would I would just be like you know um, I'm I'm involved in X club and this is how I can I could see this you know transferring to to tech or um, just just cover off like how how you think your your skills will transfer to the position. As you as you perceive it, and and uh, I, I think that's as as good as anyone can hope for in a recruiting process. Yeah. Great, Shahid has a question about uh, you know what technical skills do you use most at work, and uh, you know what what software uh, do you guys use on a daily basis? Katie, do you want to go with this one first? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so in maintenance and reliability, there was a lot of designing. Um, there's actually a machine shop like right in the maintenance shop. So definitely SolidWorks um, was a big one that we were using. Just draw something up and then they'd make it next week for you, which is pretty cool. Um, also Availability Workbench is a software that we use more on the reliability side of things for um, deciding the maintenance strategies of our components. Um, Power BI and then not obviously like your typical Microsoft um, but those are most of the programs I've used. Great. Perfect. 
Um, Sunny Kumar has a question. How is tech contributing to sustainable development? Can we toss on that one too? Cody, do you want to talk about it? I, I was gonna I was gonna dump it on Caitlin with their electric oh. buses over in over in oh, coal, but uh, I like electric buses, yeah. <laughs> All right, well divert to Katie then. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, we have electric buses. <laughs> and, <laughs> still just under now. <laughs> yeah. Um and we're so it, it's a big thing for fording because um we're actually trying to get permitting to expand the mine. Um, so there's a lot of pressure on sustainability. So in order to get that permitting, so that includes like tracking all our hydrocarbons and making sure we know where they're going, making sure that we're reporting leaks and then water quality, of course. So um, we are just built, I think it's running now a, a water treatment plant that can treat a lot of our water to get rid of the selenium in it. Um, and then uh, as another perk, we also have electric buses to go from Elkford to site two. So um, just even even the little things they count to. Well, the value I think with this, with the electric buses also, we're contributing to the electric sort of charging station infrastructure to further expand, um, you know, electric vehicles across the country too, which I think is great because otherwise, how are you going to get to that area without the charging stations, which is, which is nice. Um, Next up, uh, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apologize for mispronouncing names here. Uh, Indrajit uh, has a question about, uh, okay, so he's, um, okay, I'm a graduate process engineer, uh, an EIT license holder looking for process engineering. Okay, so applied a couple of times and, and just wondering about the, the process of hearing back. Sure, I can quickly comment on that. So, I, I mean, we do i not to discourage anyone but we do get a lot of applications so we do try and follow up so i do apologize if you haven't heard anything back yet and maybe the process is still going it does it can be lengthy at times for sure um and maybe i think probably cody can probably speak to that too he's been through the process not too too long ago uh sometimes it does take some time to go through the applications and we can at an eit role gosh it's it's not unheard of to get a few hundred applications at any given time so it, it can take us time to get through the process to get that down and then get to the interviews so um if i could ask for patience through the process we do appreciate it um and hopefully we'll be able to get back to you and at least close the loop in terms of once the process is completed to let you know where you where you sit great we got a few more questions but i know we're on cogs of time we'll get to these questions so for those who could stick around we will answer them but uh, you know because we're at time i just wanted to say thank you to our guest speakers uh, Cody, Caitlin, or sorry, Katie, Antonio, uh, and, and for the students for, for joining us today. And uh, well, we're going to continue to answer your questions, but uh, yeah, appreciate you all attending. Uh, hopefully you've learned something valuable. Uh, we'd also like to learn from you. Uh, and so we posted a link to a feedback form so that helps us determine, you know, first off, if we should be doing more campus copies in the future. And if so, what topics would students be interested in? So we definitely want to hear from you. So please uh, take literally 30 seconds to fill that out. Um, all right. Now, going back to some of the questions, Sahil has asked about, uh, yeah, does tech hire for... Um, okay, so this is a current co-op student. Uh, do we hire students back for four months? We can, and we have, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm doing too much talking today, uh, but yeah, we certainly can, and uh, we have, especially if you've already had previous experience with tech, like generally our co-ops tend to lean heavily on eight month, 12 month, but if someone has already had an eight month experience and they want to come back for a four month and they've had a really successful term, we've certainly gone and, and hired people back in that circumstance, so um, yeah, that that can happen for sure. But yeah, we, most of our co-ops, just so everyone knows, they do tend to lean on the, the longer term, especially if you're new to tech and, and similar to what the conversation has been today. It takes a little while to get your, your bearings and, and understand what's happening and, and really sink your teeth into some good projects. And to see a project from start to finish, four months really is, is a really fast um, experience. So eight months tends to be sort of the, the, the goal for us. All right, and Shahid is asked, do we have robots and autonomous trucks roaming around already? Sure do. <laughs> Katie, I don't know if you want to speak to this a little bit further, but uh, but yeah, I know we have both. Do you want to speak to it, Katie? 
I don't know a ton in, in this area, but yeah, I know Elkview did initially do one of their pits. Um, and now I think they have done both their pits uh, autonomous now. And there are a lot of struggles, like although you think there would be less maintenance because there'd be less wear and tear from, from operators or like operator errors or anything like that. But there are um, a lot of, a lot of things and improvements and stuff in that area that uh, is good opportunities for, for both mechanical and electrical instrumentation um, engineers. Yeah, for sure. Cody, do you want to speak to that at all? Um, I, I, again, can't speak that like we don't have haul trucks yeah. <laughs> on site, <laughs> so um, I, I wouldn't know. But I do know like down at, at QB2, for instance, we've got I mean, it's effectively a remote mine site, isn't it? And and I think yep. the, the control center is down in the nearest lower altitude city, but the mine site itself is so high up in the air that um, you get oxygen deprivation sickness if you don't uh, acclimate yourself over a period of a week or two before you go up there. So definitely that remote uh, piloting and, and autonomous tech is uh, huge for us. Yeah, for sure. And then from the robot standpoint, I know that there's been some, um, we have some robots in terms of maintenance and helping on a maintenance program with some of the haul trucks as well. So um, there's a bit of a program there. It might be a bit at pilot stage at this point, but kind of neat to, to see some of the technologies that we're implementing to to improve our maintenance. And then like you say, uh, efficiencies within the haul. Yeah, and also, students are getting an opportunity to get involved in this because I do know that there was the mm -hmm. robot fueling station that was going to be a capstone project that we're passing on to students. And there's there's opportunities where students are getting a chance to pilot some of the stuff. And especially at HVC or Highland Valley Copper, uh, where a lot of the stuff for QB2 technology, mine of the future is being tested out at, uh, at Highland Valley Copper. Yep. Sure. Was that Antonio jumped in there just earlier that I cut off? <laughs> oh yeah, I was just gonna say that ENM has several robots that are using the uh, what do you call it production line to scheme sync. So yeah, there's robots all over the the plant. That's awesome. Mm. Perfect. Um, Shahid wants to know: Are we gonna be hiring EITs for January 2022, Stacy? Yeah, we're always hiring EITs. So it's um, I guess the way that we run it um, at Tech is that we we don't necessarily have like scheduled times a year that we hire EIT. So it's sort of, sort of ongoing as needed basis. So I would suggest if you're looking to graduate in December and you're looking to sort of come on board in January, I would start on the hunt over the next, maybe by, yeah, by November for sure, start looking at postings. What you can do for the tech website is set yourself up for job alerts because there are a lot of positions to wade through. They might not always be tart, like highlighted as new graduate. And you can even tell from the conversation today, it might not even say, mechanical engineer. It might say operational excellence engineer. It might say continuous improvement. There's a few business improvement. There's a few different names and titles. So what you could do is um, you could go in and just highlight what if they're looking for skill sets like a mechanical engineer, then you can highlight those and then you'll get pinged as those jobs get posted so that you're aware that they're up there. So set yourself up with job alerts on the website and uh, and keep an eye on the website and they're ongoing as needed. So it might not happen if exactly January. It might be posted now, but at this point, I think we would be flexible enough to be able to wait till January if you were the successful candidate. Great. I think we managed to get through all the questions in the queue, I believe. Um, oh, hang on. No, one last came in here. Uh, is this for May 2022? Yeah, same thing. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> always hiring. Yeah. Uh, and lots, lots. 2022, I expect, is going to be a very, very big year uh, yeah. for, for hiring. Um, yeah, and if that, that's for co-op, Mickey, then um, what we would do is the postings would be up in January to recruit for May. So we usually start a recruitment four months in advance for co-op anyway, if that's what you're looking for. So um, you would certainly see them four months in advance um, at of any term. Awesome. Well, I think uh, I think we did it. We managed to get through all the questions. <laughs> nice work, team. Uh, so once again, thanks everybody, um, and there'll be more campus coffee sessions January to February. Uh, so keep your eyes out for those. Uh, there'll be different topics, but there could be some other ones relevant to you. Um, yeah, wonderful. Please, well, we're going to spam you with an email uh, to fill out the feedback form if you didn't get, click the link because uh, you're going to lose access to this chat shortly. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.